A top CEO and her security team were dining at this Copenhagen restaurant when they noticed something unsettling outside the 17th floor window. A drone seemed to be monitoring them. Huh? They had good reason to be paranoid. They were here celebrating the end of a two and a half month investigation that found that the Chinese company Huawei had conducted this ham-fisted espionage effort to try to secure a $200 million contract. This was about more than just money. Telecoms networks are a critical part of any country's national security. The investigation revealed the extent of the alleged dirty tricks that a Chinese tech giant would deploy to get a piece of it. It all started in early 2019 here at the headquarters of TDC Group. It's Denmark's biggest telecoms firm. It's also where the team dining at Restaurant Silo worked. And at the time, this was early 2019, TDC had a tender offer out there for a contract worth more than $200 million to build their 5G telecoms network. And at that time, they had whittled down the bidders to just two, Sweden's Ericsson and China's Huawei. The details in those tender offers are very closely protected. Things like pricing, how much do you charge for things? Ericsson, as it turns out, had offered to do this job for less money than Huawei. Huawei was not supposed to know that. Huawei somehow found out, and just hours before the final decision, submitted an emergency <laughs> revision to its bid. And in fact, its bid was slightly lower than Ericsson's. How had the information managed to seep out? TDC called I see no, I see no issues here. You know what I mean? Hey, all is fair and loving corporate espionage, baby. An emergency investigation. Within that decade, Huawei had leapfrogged other Nordic rivals, including Ericsson and Nokia, to become the world's biggest maker of telecommunications equipment. While not as big as Tencent or Alibaba, Huawei is a far more successful Chinese tech export. The company says that its technology connects over 3 billion people in 170 countries. The way they did that was not without its controversies, right? I've worked in the demolition sector as an estimator. That happens for every single bid, for every single project. Yeah, I feel like this is uh, definitely a common place, but I don't know. Yeah, for many years, Huawei has been under suspicion by the US government and others for potentially being under the control of the Chinese government. We what? started the Biden administration, no. which is said to be considering cutting Huawei off from all of its American suppliers. Huawei is a bad actor. There's a lot of intelligence suggesting- I mean, so is every fucking company. What the fuck? So is every Chinese company. It's so stupid. What? I love when they pick and choose like this. Also, what, what difference does it make, really? Newsflash. The damn near entirety of uh, American companies also work with the federal government on a regular basis. Like, I, I don't get it. There's a reason why, I mean, for, for the record, there's a reason why... Uh, in China, they have their own social media apps and the, their own versions of the same social media apps that you use here, including the ones that are Chinese, like TikTok. Part of the reason why they have this is because, you know, America does the exact same thing that they're saying China is doing here. That they're very close to the Chinese military and to Chinese intel. So controversy has followed Huawei wherever it's gone. But here in Denmark, Huawei was a trusted provider. Huawei had worked with TDC since 2013. So for many years, Huawei had supplied the key equipment that TDC used for its 3G and its 4G networks. Huawei had an office on this campus and many of its engineers badged into TDC every single day to service the network. It was, a, it was seen as a trusted provider. TDC becomes very alarmed because it's clear that somebody has leaked to Huawei Ericsson's sensitive information. TDC begins an investigation focused on potential insiders, potential hacking, and also potential eavesdropping within their offices. And in fact, a sweep of the boardroom found microphones hidden in the boardroom. These are some of the most sensitive types of investigations because in this case, maybe, maybe five, maybe 10 at most people had this information. What do they find? 
What they find is that the head of special projects, a guy named Dove Goldstein, they find very quickly that he had leaked this information to Huawei. The investigation as such was fairly straightforward. However, when they requested CCTV footage of Dove Goldstein's comings and goings, Dove Goldstein finds out and he confronts the executive team at TVC. So there was a leak within the security investigation. This heightened <laughs> paranoia even further. The security team decides we can't trust our own environment. We need to leave. We need to take our evidence. They seize the executive's phone. They seize their laptops. This is a very serious investigation. They realize we can't hold that information here. We need to take that evidence to another place, a secure location where we can conduct this investigation. So if you look up there, that big brown building is the Plesner Law Firm. That's the building where TDC, uh, TDC Security Group, um, moved their investigation. They uh, booked a conference room on the 15th floor of these law offices as the secure place to conduct the rest of their investigation. But it quickly sort of went awry. That same night that they moved their investigation from TDC headquarters here, Plesner's computer network came under sustained hacking attacks. The next day, after midnight, a security guard noticed a drone hovering outside the same 15th floor window where the team was working. One of the reasons they saw the drone, it had lights on it. it this is fucking nuts, dude. Holy shit. God damn. There is zero proof that Huawei's equipment has been used for state espionage or that has backdoors for China's state interests. I mean... Apparently had lights, which adds even more levels of intrigue to it, because if you lit up that room at that time with the blinds not drawn, you'd... Like, this is a bit hard for me to say that that's not, like, that's not happening at all. You know what I mean? I think any Chinese company is still ultimately, at the end of the day, uh, going to be 100% controlled by the Chinese government. They are allowed to exist at the behest of the Chinese government. Do with that information what you will. I don't even necessarily have a problem with that. I've said this before. In China, the government controls corporations. In America, the corporations control the government. You would have seen the, the full timeline of this team's investigation. The paranoia heightened. Members of the security team started to notice the same strangers popping up around town, appearing to follow and photograph them as they ate at restaurants or entered and left their homes. Even TDC CEO Alison Kirkby seemed to have attracted a persistent tail. To make matters worse, Huawei managers had written to the Danish Prime Minister, warning that should Huawei not get the TDC contract, it would, quote, severely affect other Chinese companies' investment confidence in Denmark. The Prime Minister's office didn't comment. It's pretty funny when they say this. It's like, what do you mean? Like, this is so incredibly fucking normal. Like, wh what are you talking about? America literally sidestepped a pre-existing French submarine contract with Australia and said, no, we're America. We're making the nuclear submarines. Fuck you. Suck my dick. Very openly, as a matter of fact. Looking at this and going, wow, this is blackmail unacceptable is fucking bullshit is ridiculous what are you what are you talking about we literally do this like non-stop i mean we also yeah <laughs> edward snowden for the record uh <laughs> remember edward snowden guys uh american citizen edward snowden who's now a russian citizen edward snowden uh who uh, lives in exile um Here's how the NSA spied on Cisco firewalls for years. A special attack tool let intelligence officers monitor encrypted VPN traffic. Ever known leaks revealed that the NSA had the ability to spy on Cisco firewalls traffic for years, but just how did the agency do it? We now have a clearer idea. An analysis of data from Equation Group hack shows that the NSA used a specialized tool, benign certain, that used an exploit in Cisco's Internet Key Exchange implementation to extract encryption keys and read otherwise secure virtual private network data. Cisco has confirmed the attack and compromised multiple versions of his old PIX firewalls, which were last supported in 2009. Now, spied 
on Cisco Firewall is a funny way to say this still c persists. They also have back doors. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's very, very, <clears throat> very common. The reaction was switched. Just like, just like applying pressure. Um, oh, here. Ericsson pled guilty uh, to, and paid over $206 million following a breach of 2019 FCPA Deferred Prosecution Agreement. Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. They were bribing, falsifying books and records, and failing to implement reasonable internal accounting controls in multiple countries around the world. I mean, corporate espionage in the Western world is, is super commonplace. Uh, corporate bribery in the Western world is super commonplace. Um, this goes one step beyond what is already allowed and legally permissible, which is interesting uh, when, you, when you consider it. Same with, uh, you know, surveillance, surveillance technology, uh, and, and offering uh, whatever federal government you exist under uh, back doors into, uh, into whatever the fuck you're doing. Um, all this stuff is very commonplace, uh, both sometimes legally permissible and also illegal, but, uh, you know, where they just turn a blind eye to it. Um, I guess the difference is it's yet another indicate yet another instance where it's like, oh, China is doing what we're doing. And it's like, that's what we do. Like China can't do that type situation you know what i mean because it's a foreign adversary goldstein left the company the investigation found he had allegedly leaked ericsson's secret information to jason lan he led huawei's operations in denmark and investigators determined had essentially cultivated goldstein as a source he returned to china with the i know you can see the monitors it doesn't matter it's okay it's just this monitor which is literally my main monitor the monitor that you see on the monitor that you see right here. <coughs> of the links identified, the <coughs> was called. Ow. They gathered here at Restaurant Silo. Alison Kirkby reflected on the paranoia that had enveloped them and cracked a joke about when she'd next see a drone. Minutes later, a drone reappeared outside the window. <coughs> the security team watched as it descended to the street below. Men in a white van grabbed it and sped away. And the contract? Ericsson still won it. No criminal charges were filed as a consequence of the affair. Goldstein declined to comment. Ericsson declined to comment. A lawyer for Jason Land said his client believes that he has acted in compliance with all applicable laws and that his relationship to Dove Goldstein was of a professional nature and one that was appropriate in the circumstances. Huawei said in a statement, Huawei complies with applicable laws and regulations. Why did they change the person who's reading? What? That's odd. It's just like, what the fuck? It's just a company statement. And strives for the highest standards of business conduct. We deny any wrongdoing. TDC said in a statement, We recognize some of the things in Bloomberg's findings from our own files. None of the employees directly mentioned by Bloomberg work for the company today. You can find the full story on businessweek.com. When Chinese industrial espionage goes wrong, oh my god, how many of these did they do? There is something remarkable. Something the world's superpowers are desperate to control. Is it this? Is this scene in Syriana summed up the difference between <clears throat> when we do it versus when they do it. Fun prosecutor got off message at Yale, thinks he's going to run this up the flagpole, make a name for himself. Maybe get elected some two-bit congressman from nowhere with the result that China or Russia can suddenly start having at our expense all the advantages we enjoy here? No, I tell you, no, sir. Corruption charges. Corruption? Corruption is government intrusion into market efficiencies in the form of regulation. That's Milton Friedman. He got a goddamn Nobel Prize. <laughs> we have laws against it precisely so we can get away with it. Corruption is our protection. Corruption keeps us safe and warm. Corruption is why you and I are prancing around in here instead of fighting over scraps of meat out in the street. Corruption is why we win. 
Consulting companies like McKinsey can also work with multiple businesses in the same industry and nudge one company into figuring out what another company's been doing or what they can get away with. I mean, that's that's what you pay them for built into the price point. No. Is it this? No. It's this. Big, long rope. But it's not just any big, long rope. This is the internet. Undersea fiber optic cables like this carry 99% of the world's international telecommunications traffic. Global commerce, military secrets, passive aggressive emails, zooms that could have been passive aggressive emails, and the YouTube videos you watch during those zooms. Yes, I see you, hello. All ripping through the murky depths at the speed of light. Right now, there are over 900,000 miles or over 1.4 million kilometers of cables sitting on our ocean floor. Enough to go from Fiji to Sydney, then to the moon, then around the moon 51 times, then back to Sydney, then around the earth three times, then to Melbourne. Now, because they're sitting at the bottom of the ocean, there's not a lot of footage of these cables, so we're gonna use footage of eels instead, because what is an eel if not an underwater electric rope? Think about it. Despite being some of the most important infrastructure in the world, undersea cables are vulnerable to sabotage, to espionage, to shark bitage, and wherever you find important technological infrastructure, the potential for spying, or especially both, you will find the United States and China bickering. Oh shit, iDubs, thank you for the raid. Uh, hope you had a productive 24 hours. It seems like you did. Happy that you... Uh, Happy that you crossed over the 150k boundary. Uh, from what I understand, it's still ongoing. The the charity, right? Yeah. The latest and greatest batch concerned this particular cable. The much-awaited follow-up to Southeast Asia, Middle East, West Europe five. Southeast Asia, says, Middle East, West yes, Europe six. Yes, people can keep donating. Me, we six for short, or SMWX for shorter. But before we get to the deets of this geopolitical cable measuring contest, let's talk about what these things are and how you could possibly build one. A fiber optic cable carries information as light. Flashes of laser at one end of the cable create sequences of light on and light off that get interpreted at the other end as ones and zeros. An optic fiber is a thin strand of ultra pure glass engineered to promise total internal reflection. Basically, that light fired at a certain angle will bounce all the way down the cable and never Pink Floyd its way out. Even so, the signal weakens as it travels, so cables have amplifiers at regular intervals down the line to boost it. On the ocean floor, those get their power from a layer of copper around the fiber that carries electricity all the way from the shore. Other layers include a steel wire to shield the cable from oceanic pressure, polyethylene to prevent static electricity and corrosion, crush-resistant armor to resist crushing, and tar-soaked nylon yarn on the outside to protect from ship anchors, shark bites, and other horrors of the deep. There are only 60 ships in the world that can put these bad boys down. They carry about 5,466 metric tons of cable on board in huge spools, plus a remote operated plow that crawls along the ocean floor and lays the cable, following a path designed to avoid large rocks, trenches, and coral reefs. Often, the plow just drops the cable on the ocean floor, but sometimes it digs a small trench and buries it as it goes. It's a huge operation. One of the ships, the Durable, has a crew of 80 people who split two 12-hour shifts so they can lay cable around the clock. As you can imagine, this is all expensive. Transatlantic. I love that shit, though. I mean, it's so fire. God, infrastructure. And cables tend to cost about forty thousand dollars per mile, or about twenty-five thousand per kilometer. Sometimes one huge company like Google will pay for their own, but more often, this just seems so wasteful. Instead of focusing on satellite tech, what do you mean? This is like one. You can see this as a redundancy. Two, it's. Satellite technology still has a tremendous amount of ping. It's always better to just like physically lay wires. Always. Significantly more efficient, cheaper. And I say this as someone, I say this as someone whose, you know, brother, as you guys know, quite literally builds the satellites. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, think about it this way. It's kind of redundant. Or not redundant, sorry, uh, reductive, but think about it this way. Would you rather have an Ethernet cable connected to your computer for uh, just uh, uninterrupted uh, broadband, or would you rather use Wi-Fi? Which one do you think is more reliable? It's always better. It's always better to have just hardwired cable. Multiple companies will go in as partners, splitting the responsibility of paying for and managing the cable in exchange for owning some percent of its bandwidth. 
Sort of like the Avengers, for wires. This was the case for See Me We Six. It was going to be funded by a consortium of 12 plus companies from a bunch of different countries. China, the US, France, Egypt, Sri Lanka, and more. A few contractors put in bids to lay the cable. The two that matter are China's HMN Tech, a relatively new player in the undersea cable game, and the US's Subcom, one of three companies that had laid most of the world's cable up to this point. In early 2020, the consortium gave the contract to HMN because, thanks to some government subsidies, they could build CMUE 6 for $500 million, $250 million less than Subcom. And the United States of America took that personally. Oh. The stated concern was that the US thought HMN was too cozy with the Chinese government, and that if they built the cable, said government could all too easily install surveillance equipment. But this is the US we're talking about. They were like, we... <laughs> We must do that ourselves. <laughs> and sure, the US loves to worry about China spying on us. But even more so, we love to worry about China getting too good at a tech thing. Because if they get better than us at a tech thing, what's next? Women's gymnastics? Wars? It's unthinkable. So when HMN scored the- I don't know who else said that this was like uh, an anti-China channel, but it doesn't seem like it. Um, a lot of times- a lot of times when the United States behaves this way, they're doing it not at the behest of like some real evil, secret, deep-seated, deep-rooted fear of corporate espionage or anything like that. And uh, in, in most circumstances, it's just like a, a, another protectionist route that uh, where without... Without utilizing congress and and you know legislation it's just like it's it's trade protectionism like protecting american business interests american corporate interests it, it is it, it, it's how it works the CME We 6 contract, the U.S. government went all out to flip it to Subcom. The U.S. Trade and Development Agency rolled up to five telecom companies along the cable's route and offered a total of $3.8 million. Why literally impossible to pack its name with that much data flowing at once anyhow? Dude, I'm built different, dude. I'll smell all those packets, dude. You're fucking wrong, dude. <laughs> I could do it. I also don't believe that you. it's impossible. I, I actually don't in quote-unquote training grants as long as they picked subcom to get the contract. Then came the gossip. U.S. diplomats spread this nasty little rumor that the U.S. government was going to sanction HMN, basically promising that the companies that own the cable would lose their U.S. clients and go bankrupt if they didn't just let subcom build it. The U.S. also got people talking about the security risks, how easy it might mm -hmm. be for China to put remote spying equipment on an HMN cable. Uh -huh. And, and... <laughs> and modernize China's People's Liberation Army. Like it's, like it's 1958 or something, dude. What do you mean, modernize China's People's Liberation Army? Like... <laughs> yeah. Equipment on an HMN cable, even though it wasn't gonna make landfall in China. Did they have evidence of this? Well, no, not really, but that's what makes gossip fun. Though, they did follow through on those sanctions. Meanwhile, the Department of Commerce called their buddy, the Federal Import-Export Bank, to loan some money that would drive Subcom's price down, and in February 2022, enough consortium members flipped their votes that Subcom got the contract. Subcom is expected to have CME We 6 wow. up, or I guess down and running by 2025. So, to the United States, congrats on winning another charm for your technological proxy war bracelet. And sharks, congrats on your new delicious snack. Oh, they figured that out? Well, sorry sharks, that's business. And you know what else is business? Replying to boatloads of- Yeah, this, I mean, this wasn't uh, anti-China at all. I mean, it, if anything, it was anti-America. If orcas learn to attack cables, we're so dead. I mean- that is perhaps the only thing that would flip me against the orcas. I've been pro orca thus far, but the moment that they actually go after my internet connection, I'm probably going to be anti orca. Like I, I've been pro orca this whole time, and I do hope that the revolutionary orca war against the billionaires uh, just stays with billionaires. You know what I mean, dude? I'm built different, dude. I'll smell all those packets, dude. <laughs> 